Hey everybody, I am here with Nick from HD Retrovision and Zach, aka Voltar, uh, and I called them to join me to talk about display lag because they're smarter than me, and I just put out a video kind of squashing some myths that I've been hearing thrown at me for the past 10 plus years, but there were a few things that I showed in there that were outside of the norm. So the examples that I gave would apply to 99% of the people out there who want to game on whatever flat panel they have. But there are a few things that I wanted to discuss that I didn't know the answer to, or at the very least, there might not be an answer, but it's a great question to bring up. So um, I guess I'll start with a very, very quick rundown of CRTs draw their image with a beam of light starting at the top left of the screen one line at a time until it reaches the bottom. That takes about 16.5 milliseconds, and then it goes back to the top to start over. The amount of time it takes on your average 15 kilohertz TV from when it receives the signal to when that beam of light starts drawing it is zero. It's in the microseconds, not milliseconds. And then you move on to LCD technology, which draws it one line at a time. So not a beam drawing across, but your average one top to bottom. And the amount of time it takes to start drawing that from when the input is detected is usually slower than a CRT. There are some that have gotten very fast. There's, you know, one or two zero lag ones out there which have other issues which we'll discuss. So uh, did I set the stage okay? You guys have anything to add I to that I think you were one? totally right when you said that we were smarter than you, Bob. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> so in the video, one of the things, I guess we, we don't have to do this in any particular order, but... There's a lot of questions involving display lag and how it affects gaming. And this is specific to the latency of the panel. Not controller lag, not software lag, not streaming online. We're only talking about from when the signal hits the input of the panel to when it's drawn on the screen. And one of the things that I had never seen before when I was just, as usual, carrying my time sleuth around asking friends if I could just test their monitors was one of my friends had two cheap panels. They're not gamers, so they didn't care that they were bad for gaming, but it refreshed from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. Have you two ever seen that before? No, never. I, I've not. Nope. I never have. I think that's more of a, a trick that's used in cheaper technologies. And as we all know, I'm not cheap. <laughs> but I mean, what would the purpose of that be? It doesn't cost any less to spin the panel in the other direction. You know, that's really interesting. I don't know why, um, from, a from a design perspective, in all seriousness, it, it, that's a really interesting design choice to rotate the panel over and have uh, it to effectively invert the image. But in, in your processing pipeline, you're actually taking the time to spin it back around or, or not. You're just drawing it from bottom to top. Um, I really don't have a. I really don't have uh, an answer for that in terms of why they would make that choice. Are these consumer televisions, or are they designed for something yeah, so else? Yeah. So, I'd like to be very specific here because, in case anybody hasn't seen the video yet or wasn't paying attention to that one part, the two TVs I tested, Insignia and Scepter, were the brands. They were the absolute bottom of the barrel like cheapest TVs you can get. Those are the TVs where it's like, it's 225 for this brand and it's 250 for the one that's better for gaming, but I don't play games ever, so I'm gonna save the 25 bucks. Like specifically, this is just somebody needs to display an image somewhere. And both of them had a lot of latency. So the fact that it might have to buffer at least one full frame to then redraw the image the opposite way is perfectly plausible. I just can't understand well, two things. First, I can't understand why anybody would do that unless maybe there was some weird reflection of the backlight that was not as awful if they did it from the bottom first. I don't know. Or even so why they would do it, I'd like to talk about. But also, let's take the hypothetical scenario that this was a super low latency, high quality panel. How would that affect, if at all, people's perception of the image, whether it's TV or game? I have two things I can add to this because I was just thinking about it while you were phrasing this for everybody at home. One of the possibilities, a lot of Chinese companies do this. They'll create a product based around a huge, large lot of X product that they buy. So maybe when they produce these televisions, they got a really exceptional deal on a huge lot of display panels that were designed initially to be oriented a certain way in a certain piece of equipment. 
And maybe the solution to that was when they decided to buy these panels because they were $3 a piece off of some market over there, they had to just create something in their, in their video rendering pipeline just to turn the image around 30 degrees. It's very akin to what we see in the portable Game Boy uh, IPS screen replacements, right? The screens that are used in these Game Boys that are IPS panels, they were never designed to be used for portable video games. They were actually used in Blackberries and in other older pseudo older cell phones. And so these screens are oriented technically upside down or sideways in Game Boys, but we have the driver in there that's actually going to do the job of turning it back around so that the screen is oriented as far as our eyes are concerned correctly. So that might be why that they are choosing to do this, not because they've, they've elected to do it that way, but they're just working around the limitation of this display panel that they purchased, which might not have been necessarily designed to be used in televisions. We see that happen, happening all the time. Now, number two, a very interesting question, Bob. Does it have, if we rotate the screen and we draw from bottom to top, as opposed from the top down to the bottom, does this have an impact on our game playing? Well, let me well, pause okay. you right there because Thank you. I think you yes. nailed it. I absolutely think you nailed it. Nick, you know, we'll jump in if you think I'm wrong here, but not only do I think you're right, I think that's a very good thing. I think a company recognizing like, hey, there's a bunch of displays that were meant for vertically oriented signs at Burger King or whatever that only have the mounts here and here. And here's a whole other bunch of plastic panels for, or a tooling for a plastic panel. And we could make these work by just building a slightly different bracket, putting it upside down and, and just changing the software to rotate it. I think that's probably what happened. I'm glad you brought that up. And I think that's a really good thing because it re, you know, there's less e-waste because they repurpose it. People get cheaper TVs. Um, and a lot of these brands are all made in the same factory. So Scepter and Insignia could actually be the same exact Certainly. thing. So I think you hit the nail on the head on why that happened. I think it's a good thing for everybody but gamers, you know, because of all the latency. Uh, Nick, in your experience, that sound about right? Yeah, I mean, anything I say, I mean, Zach, too, this is kind of speculative, but I think that's like along the right lines where most likely that was not a design choice based around the end consumer. It was these, the parts they're using were designed for some other specific purpose and they're kind of just making do with what they have. I think that seems the most plausible explanation. Completely, totally anecdotal. But if, I, if you sit and think about it, that's the only thing that seems plausible to me. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Now, could you please continue from your point of how it might affect gamers or even people just... So this TV? question is interesting because it's been asked for a few years now, especially in the, in, the, in the gaming communities, in the competitive gaming communities, where they're not so much relying on CRTs, but they're actually using flat panel display technologies. The question always is, where is latency quantifiable by our human senses? And there was a really interesting conversation that I saw a couple of people have a couple of years ago. They were playing a game. I don't even remember the name of the game, but it was a shooter. There were two different types of shooters they were comparing. They, they, one of the people made the claim that because that the shooter, the, the, the character that you manipulate is at the top of the screen, think of like Breakout, only Breakout, your paddle's not at the bottom, it's at the top. Well, because it's at the top, they have a much better response time in terms of responding to what they see on the screen because even on the flat panel, that's the first order of business that's drawn. Now, let's say at the top of the screen, uh, you have like six or seven milliseconds of latency. Okay, that's, that is what it is. And let's say at the very bottom of the screen, you have 14 to 16 milliseconds of latency. The question always is, if the game business is happening at the top, as far as you're concerned, are you going to have a difference in terms of your response time and your reflexes if it's on the bottom or on the top? Your question's interesting because it's kind of the inverse. Well, we have a screen that's drawing from bottom to top as opposed to top to bottom. Do you think that's going to have an, imp an impact on the people who are going to use this screen to play games? And I just don't know. I don't think so, but then again, I, it depends. It depends on what the latency is when it first starts drawing, and it depends on what the latency is when it stops drawing at the other side. Yeah, I mean, I don't think specifically the drawing from bottom to top or top to bottom would have an effect on you in the majority of gaming situations. I think what the bigger effect is, like, is the fact that they're doing a whole bunch of processing to deal with this 
um, you know, adding enough lag. Um, uh, aside, no, from... this is in the context of hypothetically, if we found one that's you know zero latency okay. or equal uh, equal latency to another panel, not these crappy ones in particular. I would be very skeptical. Like maybe there so, is, you know, the point one percent of the population that can um, it, interpret, <laughs> uh, you know, the difference between the first millisecond and ten milliseconds later. I, I'm just, it, I, I doubt it. Look, here's the way I look at this. Yeah, oh, go ahead, so Bob. I think go ahead. Go to... ahead. I'm sorry. I just I think we have to pause for a moment, and I do want to continue right from this point, but I think we have to pause for a moment to discuss something that very many people either think is the same or just forget to even, uh, you know, put in their head is reaction time versus muscle memory. So uh, we use an example before um, where, you know, trick shooters, right? Reaction time is when they see the light light up when they pull out their pistol and start shooting. That's reaction time. Mm -hmm. How fast from when they see the light to when they draw. And muscle memory is how many times they could pull that trigger to hit the target. So they're not consciously thinking, pull the trigger, let go, pull the trigger, let go. That's something that they've just practiced and programmed themselves. So reaction time, in the, in the shmups example, right, you have your bullet coming from the top of the screen down. As soon as you see that bullet, that's your reaction time. How far or, you know, how fast before you react to dodging that. But then your hands, let's say there's, let's say there's a Hadouken in a fucking shooting game, right? Just for the point of argument. The moment you see that bullet, you do your multi-combo special move. That's reaction time. You're not thinking down, up, A, B, let, you know, you're just sweeping your controller doing that. So that's your muscle memory. So video games are a combination of both. And the best players on the planet, much like the best trick shooters on the planet, have an incredibly fast reaction time, but it's still combined with how long it takes to do their moves. So it's kind of hard to visualize this. I wish I had access to one of those 100,000 frame per second cameras so we could go through this. But So when we're talking about things like this, when you're scrolling from top to bottom, you see the bullet, you see the enemy, you see whatever else, can somebody really see as you know react as fast as the beam of light or the you know the single line at a time draws or would that be as soon as the image appears which brings me to the other part that ties right into this is the plasma tvs i uh those i saw were two frames of lag but zsworks his tv or his monitor kit you could choose to refresh top to bottom and it's just about zero in the top corner or in the top uh, row or you could choose to set that monitor to a mode where it displays the entire frame at the exact same time, but it buffers one full frame. So you're still reacting to when you see that image. So would it matter that it's drawn top to bottom or bottom to up, or it's just soon as it appears on the screen? I don't think it has any bearing. I don't think there's any high level athlete or a high level human being with the fastest twitch muscle fiber available that's going to be able to scan an electron beam let's just say it's a crt for example scan an electron beam beaming across beaming across beaming across at 15 kilohertz and let's say let's say oh i can detect four milliseconds of latency i can detect it and i can press the a button and i can stop that beam every time if your CRT takes 16.6 .6 milliseconds of latency, that effectively means that for every four milliseconds and change, you've drawn a fourth of your entire frame. So four milliseconds down, right? This is your CRT. This is how big it is. Four milliseconds is going to be here. That's where it's going to be. Show me a human being who can detect that and press, press that button to stop that beam anywhere in this vicinity. If they can, it's because of something that Nick was talking about earlier. It's just the laws of probability. It has nothing to do with their reflexes. And Nick, you may want to discuss that because you're a mathematician and you're a former priest. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just think, um, you know, depending on... Uh, you can contrive scenarios where it's probably possible. Like, you're really focused on that shmup ex vertical shmup example which i think is probably a, a scenario where maybe like some elite type person could detect that but in like if you're just talking about the entire universe of video experience 
you know, watching movies or um, playing just any other type of game. I, I just doesn't seem likely to me that, you know, this is going to be something that 99% of people are going to and, be able to do. And something else, Bob, that you mentioned that I think it's really important to kind of flesh out a little bit here. We were talking about reaction time and we were talking about muscle memory. Well, reaction time is predicated on your response to a visual cue. I see a bullet, I'm going to move, I'm going to react. Muscle memory is just something that is neurologically innate in you now because it's a re it's something that, muscle memory is something that is con contrived of or is, is based upon uh, habitual repetition. That's what muscle memory is. Muscle memory has no bearing whatsoever on no, let me let me let me say this a little more clearly. Screen display latency has absolutely no bearing on one's ability to perform muscle memory tasks. For example, in Street Fighter 2 or let's just say a fighter game, right? Like you have a you have a combo chain that you know and that you if somebody does something, you can do like this muscle memory move and you can just totally destroy them. The video game console or the system is going to be responsible for capturing all those muscle memory moves. Regardless of how slow or how fast the television or your display is, that has absolutely no influence or bearing on the, con on the console capturing your muscle memory moves. The only thing that has any bearing on any of that is your reaction time. So when people say, well, it's going to affect my muscle memory, I think, that they, I think they're full of shit. I think they're full of it. So I think you're both oh, fuck wrong, you. but I would love for you to I would love for you to prove me prove me wrong. First of all, Nick, the reason I'm so confident to say that you were wrong is because you could take somebody that knows nothing about technology at all mm -hmm. and you could show them a, a perfectly calibrated 720p image on a really nice widescreen CRT. And you could take that same person on a really high quality 720p OLED and and 720p plasma and 720p LCD and they're gonna look at all of them and go, I mean it's the same movie but they all look different. They don't know why. They don't know what they're looking at. But they could absolutely, even though they're not saying, oh well look that thing draws its image by the beam of light and this one's you know, everybody could tell that there is a difference, which means that subconsciously these things could affect the way that you interact with them, or not. And your example, Zach, here's where. Here's something that really changed my entire outlook on latency and put a lot, it removed a lot of the guesswork. The shmups example was good, but Tetris is better because uh, NES Tetris, there's no frame buffer whatsoever. It was designed to be played, you know, with essentially the lowest amount of latency the software would allow through that console. And Brian from Retro USB, when he was designing his wireless controller, took pro Tetris players. So we're talking about the top 1%, most probably less than that, most elite players. And he had a little thing designed in the software where they would just start playing. And when they get up to the higher levels, as soon as it hit about eight milliseconds, they were no longer able to do their special moves. So here's a combination of two things. First of all, you see the thing appear on screen and you react to it. Mm -hmm. So that's reaction time. The muscle memory thing is affected because now you go okay, it's a, you know, it's a, a straight block and I got to get over to the right. So your hands without even thinking go right, 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 A, you know, and, and that's it. So while you're right, the muscle memory isn't affected directly. What if that image comes down eight milliseconds afterwards, after you see it, because it's getting sent out of the console now, you see it eight milliseconds later and you don't have enough time to do your move because it's slow enough to but react your, to that. But your muscle, memory, your muscle memory moves has nothing to do with your reaction time. This all comes down to the reactionary measure. I see the square block. I want to put in whatever piece you want to put in. It all comes back down to the reaction time. So I don't think that it's fair to say when people say, oh, this is screwing up my muscle memory, my muscle memory is being, you know, blah, 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 blah. I don't think it has anything to do with your muscle memory moves. I think it has to do with your reaction time. Now, eight milliseconds is half a frame. I could see where people could certainly have um, a, a, an issue with with a half a frame of latency uh, on those super high levels. But are we talking about half a frame? Or are we talking about a fourth? Of, how many how many lines? How many video lines are there in an in, in, in an NT, NTSC frame? Is it five hundred twenty five lines? Okay, so yeah. if you if you divide that by four, you get like one hundred thirty one lines. I'm sorry, I don't see anybody unless you're like. Lord Jesus himself, 
that is going to be able to quantify 131 lines passing on the display and reacting to that. I don't think people are reacting to an electron beam. I think people are reacting to imagery. But the problem, of course, is that image is predicated on that electron beam. So really, they kind of are, right? They kind of are, then they're kind, and then they kind of aren't at the same time. But there has to be a point to where latency not only yields a diminishing return in, ter a return in terms of your reactionary performance, but to where it's fucking meaningless. And the, the question really is, how do we quantify that so that we can sort of abate a lot of these silly uh, uh, rumors and whatnot that have kind of uh, uh, prevailed over the past three or four years? And B, um, how do we keep you out of jail, Bob? <laughs> From well, well, let me finish. Um, I am just opening up a beer with my HD retrovision. How do we keep opener. you away from the horse stables? Uh, <laughs> so, here's the thing. Um, what what we're talking about here is going to branch off into something I would like to move on mm -hmm. to later, not mm -hmm. now. But your perception of beam versus drawing, um, how fast it takes for those pixels to go all the way dark to all the way uh, all the way light again. <clears throat> That's definitely something we should talk about later, but just to stay with the latency okay. thing for now, um, I think I think every pro fighting game player um, for retro stuff with no frame buffer, I think they all, anybody who pays attention to latency agrees that half a frame is their cutoff. And whether that's because they've heard other people say it and they just agree with it, I'm not really sure. But when I put things like uh, the Tink 5X, which has, what, 2.5 milliseconds of latency, or the GBS Control, which is just about, you know, 2.53 milliseconds, nobody's affected by it. Nobody. And these are people who are used to playing on CRTs or near-zero lag monitors. These are people who are, you know, well, I'm talking about people that are flown across the planet to, to play in these tournaments. So I think half a frame is, is something that, everybody kind of has in their head but what about below that so let's just say from the hypothetical point of view that half a frame eight milliseconds is especially into something like tetris where you really are going from top to bottom and i'd love to put one of those i'd love to find a fast panel to go bottom to the top uh, to see if that makes a difference but you have that scenario where is that cut off because if you're talking about the panel or the pieces entering from the top of the screen, you are actually seeing those first couple, uh, first couple of milliseconds of it being drawn, yeah, right? Yeah. And how much? So how... I, mean, I, th I think this is what Zach was alluding to, um, a little bit earlier. Is like there is not going to be a hard cutoff. Like th this is a probability distribution. Um, if you're talking on the one extreme end with zero lag, affects nobody. You t the other extreme where it's eight frames a lag 100 percent of people are affected and you it, like there's not like all of a sudden you get to half a frame and below that you know 100 percent of people can't detect it i think if there's some distribution there and that distribution is heavily influenced by the content so a fighting mm -hmm. game is going to be different than tetris is going to be different than, an rpg you know yeah i mean yeah Exactly. You could have five frames of lag on an RPG and never know because it's not reaction right. time based. Although people said Mario RPG does have reaction based things in it, and I shouldn't it use does. that as my example. It does. It does. I yeah. never played the game. Someone like me who sucks at video games up. probably not going to be bothered by anything sub frame, whereas you may be quite a bit more. Sensitive. I suck at video games, but I I usually can tell a frame unless it's unless it's in a. a Unless it's in context of something that was designed for gaming. So you have any of those buffers. Like one of the examples I showed was uh, one of my panels adds a rolling frame of latency uh, for 30 hertz. I don't think I could notice that because of the way it buffers as it's going. It would really, it would be like a 1 in 16 chance of me being able to detect that. I really don't think I could at all. Um, whereas, like, if something is rock solid at two frames, like, really great software latency on a fast panel, I could probably, like, I might think, like, hmm, is something off? Am I off? And then ten minutes into playing, I'd be used to that. But if that's, re if that's variable between two and three, 
now that's when it gets to be a problem. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's also I think it's also a matter of what is your baseline? Like three or four milliseconds, Bob. I think we can all agree is pretty ins- insubstantial. But three or four milliseconds. No, no, no. Four, four is the number that I continuously use. That in my head, I always think if you're at four, it's zero. Unless tool assisted speed runs or light guns are involved, or I guess maybe Sega 3D glasses. Whenever hardware is designed to go to the exact line that you're talking about. But four is the number that's brought up to me all the time. Uh, and, you know, I, I, there's one community out there that is very passionate about their games. Um, and some of them are amazingly smart and passionate. And I think a lot of the other ones just kind of repeat what they're hearing without context. But they're the ones that usually call me out when I say four milliseconds is, you know, is should be considered zero. And I made the point in the video that I think a lot of those people confuse frames and milliseconds, but it's still, there's still a lot of people that are absolutely 100% convinced that they cannot do their special moves in a fighting game with four milliseconds of latency. But that kind of brings well, up... Well, a lot of people are dumb, Bob. About. Does that mean you're going to entertain them for yeah, the rest of your I, life? I, I'm not being mean, it's just a fact I'm, of life. I mean... I, I'm skeptical that most people even know the total amount of latency they're dealing with. Because it's not just one number, right? That's like, what I was getting ready to say. You, you, you can't you can't just look at your TV's latency, which is, That's, first of all, a combination of yeah. the processing plus the refresh of the pixels. So you can't even break that apart. And then you're adding on whatever, ex, like you said, maybe the you're using a Tink, which has... Um, what did you say? Two and a half. The Tink 5X has 2.5 milliseconds of light. Yeah, then, not frames. It's horrible. Then, then you can add on, like maybe you're using a wireless controller. That's another mm. two and a half. Whatever it's the a, case it's a, is. It's a cumulative. How many of these people know exactly the latency they're dealing with? So maybe the you're talking that I'm addressing, to it, The people that I'm addressing are the smart ones that actually have some sort of baseline measurement. And they're not using wireless controllers at all. Okay. And they're using consoles. But the point that you made earlier is the game that you're playing and, you know, the software that you're using has such a big uh, effect on it. And that's something that I haven't done so I really, really haven't done many measurements on. But certainly in real world practice, any console that didn't have a frame buffer, um, the lag, any kind of latency on that, I was noticing a hell of a lot quicker than consoles that did have a frame buffer. And how exactly does that work and how reliable are those frame buffers? So you're talking N64, GameCube, I guess Wii and everything else. Like, are they really rock solid that every frame is buffered and then immediately afterwards it's displayed on the screen or does that ever vary in any way? Oh, what are you asking? What is is creating the frame buffer? I'm sorry, maybe I missed it. In the context of N64, GameCube, fighting games, popular fighting games, stuff like that, or, you know, PlayStation, any console that has a frame buffer in the chain, does that ever become a factor for people who are measuring latency? I don't know, but I think all the people, I'll give you another example that's kind of compliments yours. All of the people who are in these Super Smash, who who are heavily involved in like Super Smash Brothers competitive uh, 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 tournaments, anything from like the GameCube to, to, to the Wii U, uh, especially the people in the Wii U and the Wii, uh, people who play Smash Brothers on Wii and Wii U who complain about, oh, I can't use that television, it's got 8 milliseconds, yet here I am with my goddamn Bluetooth controller that has 60 milliseconds, I think they're stupid. I think they're just dumb people who get on stupid places, they go to stupid places on the internet like schmups.com, well, and then they listen, read these stupid forums. I, I want so badly to make, <laughs> I want so badly to make a smelly Smash player joke right now. However... I think it's really important that we recognize that just because some of the loudest people that play that game might be morons, that there are smart people who are excellent totally. gamers, who that's one of their games of choice, who have done measurements and who understand what it is that yeah, they're yeah, doing. Yeah. And I think it's unfair for us to make those jokes as accurate as they may be um, when the people I'm talking about are not the trolls 
Because I've had that same community write me multi-page comments that say humans can't detect any latency under 100 milliseconds, so everything I do is a lie. And it's like, I'm pretty sure I have about 50 examples with measurements that I can prove you wrong. But it's, there, you know, there's a lot of people in that community that just get really passionate about, about their game yeah, yeah, yeah. and repeat what other people say. Right. But I don't know why they're louder than other communities, because every community of people has their morons. Every one of them. I had somebody from a Street Fighter community once tell me that there's no way there could be latency because they're using the analog inputs of their monitors, and analog inputs never have any latency. Well, let's, let's just zero. remember. It's let's like, just put all this into perspective in terms of the, the ilk of people that we're referring to. And of course, I don't, I don't speak, uh, I don't speak for the entire Smash community. Let's not be silly. I'm talking about the only seventy uh, percent. of the ones I'm talking about only eighty percent of that community. But the, the fact of the matter is. 80.9 repeating. But the only the only point that I want to make is the, the elk of those people who make those sort of just outrageous, uh, fantastical uh, uh, comments are the people, no offense, like <laughs> who, uh, who who says in response to a latency question on a piece of equipment he's trying to hawk on, on his YouTube channel, I played the fucking game. There is no lag. I played the game. How do you know there's no lag? Because I played the fucking game. I want you to take that clip, Bob, that 30 second clip, and I just want you to just put it in here. Oh, you pussy. God, you fucking suck. But But here's the difference though. And I know we're getting a little bit off topic, but when an excitable Smash player starts Mm -hmm. saying that, it's, you know, it's either because they're looking for attention or it's because they really are just trying to get their the best out of their gaming experience. And they don't want to make the silly mistakes that none of us should make. If you're a gamer, and you're on a budget, you could buy a gaming monitor for the exact same price as those crappy TVs I showed in, you know, in the video. So they want to make the right choices. Whereas the person that you that you put up there, which I might even just bleep that out because I'm tired of his freaking followers harassing Pussy. me. That's a person who recommended something and told people to spend their money on it based on his non-measurement. And then completely dismissed everybody as assholes that called him out for it, Not in, rather than just being like, you're right, I shouldn't have, uh, you know, shouldn't have done that. So those are two completely different scenarios, which is why I'm so much more patient with the Smash players, because the ones that just aren't looking for attention, their end goal is a better gaming experience. And isn't that what all of us do? I mean, you make boards that, uh, that make things sharper, Nick's make cables that no one could ever buy that would potentially make it better you know i talk about all this stuff so yeah i mean i guess it's really depends on who your your audience is i mean if you're (laughs) it seems like we're really focused on the the um you know people who are playing specific games that like this stuff matters and um it's not the game that I'm focusing on. It's just that it just so happens that that one group has fixated on this four millisecond thing. I, I mean, wouldn't pay really mind think to it them. stems from four uh, frames versus I, I, four I milliseconds. Wouldn't, I don't think there's anything specific about the four millisecond number. I like I, I think it's probably close to zero percent of people can determine the difference between zero and four milliseconds. It's not zero. Not making that claim, but it's probably close enough to zero is where that number is coming from. Um, it depends, though. It's all where your baseline is. Like I, like I was saying earlier, four milliseconds unto itself is nothing. But if we're, if it's if if there's a if it's a cumulative process, meaning oh, four second four milliseconds isn't a big deal, but gee, my controller has well, no 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 not even my controller. My TV already has my TV's pretty low latency. It's fourteen milliseconds, and that's what I'm using to competitively play. But damn. That extra four milliseconds, that's almost put me up to... Pushes you into the next frame. Yeah, that pushes me in the next frame. And so therefore, that's when it might become a problem. And perhaps those people certainly have a reasonable argument to make that four seconds, four milliseconds just might be too much. But again, it's all relative. It's all in where you begin. Yeah, that's a very good point. And, you know... That's uh, the other thing that I would love to do is take these players that are definitely sensitive to the eight millisecond thing. Uh, I know my, my buddy Arturo has one of the ZSWorks monitors. I'm sure he'd be willing to bring it with him. He's known for bringing, you know, a truckload of equipment to every event. I would love to have a little side thing where we pull some of the best players aside and say, will you do an experiment with us? Play three rounds and have or four rounds and mix it up and have two rounds be standard zero latency it's still not the greatest panel which we'll get to soon and then do two more rounds where it buffers one full frame 
but then the entire screen refreshes. At but the you, same don't time. you don't tell them. You don't tell them what they're playing. Right. Don't tell them. Right. That's very important. Yeah. But to be honest, I hate lying and I hate liars, but this is absolutely the type you have to remove lie. bias. This though. is the time where I'd be like, hey, uh, you know, we're going to do color temperature testing. So just oh, tell me yeah. if your eyes, you know, I if you like w- the blue balance better. So they're not even thinking about latency. So now I now I said it out loud. So aren't we going to be sneaky about this? But, you know, I, th- I hate liars, but I think that's an ex- a perfectly good excuse or, you know, we, to Bob, do that. This is so. how double blind experiments yeah. are done. Yeah. And in fact, you shouldn't even know which DV is which when you're doing that. We hate liars experiment. here. That's why Steve Kulov was not yeah. invited. I just want to say that. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> Missy Steve, but uh, but yeah. So I guess we should move on because I think we're we're all in agreement that you know agreement, Bob. Not agreement. No solid agreement, number. please, Bob. Let's just let's just keep it professional. Really? We're we're all in agreement. I don't know. Jesus. Okay, I'll have to look that up yeah, afterwards. Up. We are all in agreement that there is no solid number that you could say won't affect anybody other than zero. Even though if you do, I did post a video a while back of what two milliseconds of latency looks like when I was testing the PS1 digital. And it was, you know, the electron beam was like this. It was chasing it just below it. So it's I really, 65. you know, I, I still think that about eight it is really the cutoff for humans. But I'll, I'll, I'll try my best to word it a little bit differently just because you guys are right in that there really isn't a solid number that you could say for sure that every human would, wouldn't be affected by. But what is something that I think is interesting is what about the refresh, the refreshing of the pixels themselves? So sure, you have a ZSWorks monitor that you installed in a Samsung LCD panel. And yes, absolutely. From the time that it receives its signal to the time that light starts lighting up is just about zero. But it's still a cheap LCD panel that takes a lot of time for it to go all the way bright to all the way dark again. So is... Is this something that affects uh, gamers other than having that annoying ghosting or anything like that? I mean, I think it, when, when you are talking about latency in general with a panel, you are really talking about both of those things. Yes. Um, it, it, it's hard to say you know, where it's coming from uh, unless you've got some kind of special way of measuring. But in general your latency consists of the processing and frame buffering, whatever you're doing, plus the long, how long it takes once you've sent that to the pixel for that pixel to change. So it's those two components kind of put together. Um, and I, I don't think it matters too much. Like, is it one millisecond from the processing and four milliseconds from the pixel refresh or is it five milliseconds processing? Like either one of those is going to, I would imagine, affect you virtually the same way. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So I think um, with flat panel technology, we've been so obsessed to the past. I mean, since it came out, with how long it takes to start drawing the image, because that really was, you know, the worst for gamers. Mm-hmm. That we're talking about reaction time in the way that we just discussed. However. I think once panels start to get a lot lower in latency, which they have, I mean, I showed an example of a $100 1080p monitor that had 2.5 milliseconds of latency. I, I'm still sticking to my guns that that should be considered zero, but whatever. Um, but it's a shitty panel, you know, like you could play your games on it, but you're going to get ghosting. You're, you know, it's, it's nice and sharp and everything, but it's a hundred bucks. So there's got to be, you know, I know there's the uh, the full black to, to white measurements, there's the gray ramp measurements and all that stuff, but I do think that the overall experience is affected by that. But in the context of this talk, do do you think there's a scenario in which they could start, they meaning the panels, can start, uh, what do you mean they, could start drawing the image at a low latency, but it doesn't finish drawing until the next pixel's on, so there's a lot of ghosting, is there a scenario you think that you could mix the ghosting with persistence of vision where it would affect your reaction time? I think so. I think this was a problem. Uh, this, uh, You know what? I think for typists, and I'm going to go back to the 90s, when TFT LCDs started to become prominent in these large laptops during the 486 days, 
I remember somebody、mm-hmm. telling me that typists had a big problem. I think even in courtrooms where they were dictating or they were they were taking the minutes for what would for whatever was happening, and that they the, because of the ghosting、uh, and the 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 latency of just the screen. Like Nick said, it's kind of two things in one. Because of those two things with this newer TFT technology, they were having trouble. With their eyes keeping up with what they see on the screen and what they were typing, and they were actually they were making a lot of grammatical errors that they weren't making with the traditional electronic keyboards, and I believe they attributed that to the slow, laggy screens that they. Because what happened was, I guess, is they took all these electronic typewriters out, and they just put in all these laptops with these screens, and I think that 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 affected. They attributed the the the, the grammatical errors in their in their.、Uh, Typing dictation to、uh, to 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 that. So yeah, I think it kind of can. I think it certainly can. So I phrased my question wrong. Now I'm kind of glad I did because I'm glad you brought that point up.、Um, you're you're right.、Uh, you know, our friend Steve Nutjob from RetroTech just showed that LCD PVM. That was the first le-、uh, edition LCD PVMs. That not only was it a lot of latency, the the ghosting on that was so bad it's just unplayable. So. I'm glad I, I made the mistake so that we could just mention that. But I was actually talking in the context of modern pens. Oh, but sorry. But you're right. If you start to get pre 2010, especially back into the 90s, like if anybody finds a 1990s LCD, but it's not worth anything. Don't put it up on eBay. You know, and try to scalp it as vintage. But like, play a game on it for a moment and just recognize how shitty it is. <laughs> I mean, they were so. So bad for such a long time, and they really were only needed when things, when weight and and size mattered,、right. you know, and that was it. But so I'm glad we talked about that just to recognize that yeah, there were some awful panels over the years. But I'm talking about 2010 ish. So when plasmas, when 1080p plasmas were of normal people affording, you know, not when they were 20 grand each. From about that time, the LCDs of that time. We're still not great in 2010, but they were definitely not terrible. So, from that point on, and especially now, right? So even the cheapest LCDs now, if you just find ones that are for gaming, they don't ghost, 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 <laughs> nearly as bad as they used to. So, do you think in a modern display that's something that would affect?、People? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's. I don't think it's going to affect their their performance or their reactionary times. I think it's just going to affect them. In terms of frustrating them, because there's nothing worse than when you're playing Mario or Mega Man, or you're playing a game that's got a nice, smooth scrolling background, and you see like the blocks on Mario as they go past. They have that long comet-like trail because the pixels, the transitional time of the pixels, isn't fast、yeah. enough. I think it's more of a nuisance than it is an actual like a performance eater in terms of like your ability to play. That's just my opinion. Nick, do you have any thoughts? It's one of those things that if it if it bothers you, it bothers you. It's just like. I know a lot of people that prefer Bob D interlacing, even though it is a little、Ugh. shaky, because there's none of those D interlacing lines. You know the you know, the the comb the combing lines that you see behind any motion that you know you still sort of get in motion、uh, motion adaptive D interlacing. So it's one of those if it bothers you, it bothers. It gives me a migraine. I mean, the reason that, people、uh, the, the reason people like the Bob stuff is it doesn't require the frame buffer. It's fast.、Right? There's no frame storage. Just do it. Yeah. There's no frame storage, but there's also no none of、combing. that artifacting on the screen. The combing. Jesus, Thank you.、Bob. Thought you. I'm combing right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's. I I think that with 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 Bob the interlacing, it's interesting because when you line double or when you line triple, or you four x, when you increase the line, when you when you when you enhance the line multiplier,、uh, Bob the interlacing is a little more. Excuse me, it's a little more tolerable for me, but. I can't. St- I mean, I'll have a seizure if I watch Tekken Three, excuse me, or something play for too long because it's just too much shaking. Now, motion adaptive the interlacing, courtesy the Retro Tink Five X, is phenomenal, and I recommend everybody try that. Or the GBSC is even. Oh man, the GBSC has phenomenal motion adaptive the interlacing algorithms. It's great. Yeah, I, I was about to throw that in there as well because I just.、Uh... Sometimes we get accused of being shills for the Tink products, when in reality we're all such assholes. If the Tink products sucked, we'd be the first yeah, to be like, "Don't yeah, buy、exactly. it." So, That's right. So always,、uh, you know, I always like to make sure to throw in the alternatives. Yeah. But yeah. Um. So, Zach, you brought up something yesterday that I thought was like, 
This is more theoretical, but I, I was really fascinated by the prospect of this. What if, uh, hypothetically, there is a panel that is faster than a CRT? Now, of course, when you start drawing the image, zero is zero. So zero milliseconds is zero milliseconds. That's not what I'm talking about. Uh, what if you have something that's set up like a video game to display 60 frames per second? And we're all used to up to, you know, as low as 16 and a half milliseconds to draw that frame. Most of the modern technology takes a little longer. But what if you have a display where the entire image is drawn in three milliseconds and then it persists on the screen for another 13 milliseconds and then the next image is drawn? At, at some point, do you think that's going to affect gaming because the entire frame appears on the screen faster than a CRT would. Here's an interesting way of looking at this. And I think this is the most, e this is the sim this is the way to just make this kind of rudimentary. Let's say you're looking at a CRT. You got a CRT on the left side and you got, a, you got an LCD or an LED. You got a flat panel on the right side, right next to each other. And you've got your, you've got your time sleuth, which I have, I don't have out, but at any rate, you've got a time sleuth, right? And let's say you're going to the CRT and you're measuring, you don't care what the latency is at the top, you're just, you're, you've got the time sleuth at the bottom of your CRT because you want to see how long it takes for a CRT to measure, to, to, to draw or render an entire field. And you put it down there and you're getting like 16.6 .6 milliseconds or 16, whatever, you're getting 16 milliseconds. Wow, that's pretty fast. Now let's say you take that uh, time sleuth and you move it over to the bottom of your LCD or your flat panel and you're, you're, you're using the same video content or you're doing the same thing and it renders like 12 milliseconds. 12 milliseconds. Does that... Have you ever seen that? Because I have not, I, by the way. Have you ever actually seen that I have in real never life? seen that, but I don't think that it's... Mm. I don't know. I don't have a lot of access to a lot of flat panels, but let's just say theoretically that we get a hold of one that doesn't render the top of the screen at 8 milliseconds, but it can render the bottom of the screen at 15 milliseconds because of the it's just flat panel technology is radically different than that electron beam that scans left to right in a, in a CRT. So let's just say for, for for the sake of academia that this LCD is drawing at like 13 or 12 milliseconds at the bottom of the screen. Does that mean that we have tele we have display technologies that are faster than our highly coveted CRT technology, and is that a problem? And is that even possible? Nick, we take it to you. <clears throat> possible, I, I could imagine uh, if you're generating your video stream in parallel, right? Like the reason, I think you gotta go back to why is it drawing like this, right? It's because the data is streaming in serial, right? Yes, that's right. You're, you're getting, like in a CRT, you're getting like an, an analog waveform that describes, you know, what, what's on the TV and it's just streaming in and drawing that, that out as you go. But if you had, I don't know, a massive number of parallel data lines, each dedicated to maybe one line of the TV or even one pixel, like you imagine some crazy thing where you're generating millions of pixels in parallel I, I could see like theoretically that being possible i don't know why you would spend the money to do something like that but I, well there is one example i can give um i might be remembering this wrong but one of the spinner controller games like super breakout for atari the 2600 updated every line it was drawn not every frame that it was drawn which is why, even though something from the 70s, when you grab that spinner controller and you move it back and forth, it feels oddly fluid, like very strange. Mm -hmm. And I was told by somebody smarter than me that that's one of the reasons why. And that, you know, when you're playing on a CRT and you're, you're actually seeing what the reaction of one line at a time would be in a controller. Mm -hmm. So if that is true, if that, if I'm interpreting what that person said correctly, that would mean that that would mean technically that if you had something that that refreshed on a line basis which would you know would then have to translate to pixels as you moved it around you would miss inputs or you'd see skipping well the here's the reason we bring this up here's the reason we bring this up and this is a question for you bob when we measure 
when we, we know what a CRT takes in order to draw a frame, we know how much time that takes to render a field of video. But when we see all these measurements, such as on RTings or CNET, where they're, where they're reviewing these television sets or these display technologies, and we see this television in game mode has an input latency of 13.33 milliseconds. It's very important to understand that that measurement, does it happen at the top of the screen or does that measurement happen at the bottom of the screen? So here's the stance that I've taken, and I'm always, always open to, to being corrected if I'm wrong. I'm not one of those people that's married to my ideas, but based on the hundreds of TVs that I've tested, like, legit, people have joked around, like, is that a time sleuth in your pocket, or are you happy to see me? And I'll pull out a time sleuth, you know, an HDMI cable. I always test at the top left, because that's when the image starts to be drawn. And I often... Oddly enough, I see less, so you have like, let's say four milliseconds of latency on the top left, and you have three milliseconds of latency on the bottom right. So I think part of that is every CRT I've me measured, I've never once seen 16.5 in the bottom right. And that's, I'm assuming, because it takes time for that electron gun to reset itself and go back to the top left. So I don't think you'll ever get a 16.66 reading on the bottom right of a CRT. I mean, unless there's some kind of buffering, because a lot of that time, you know, a lot, we're talking milliseconds here, but part of that time has to be, has to be considered for when it moves back to the front. So I think the time it takes for a panel to draw its full image, you, I, I could definitely see a scenario where there's eight milliseconds of latency in the top left, or even, you know, 20 milliseconds of latency in the top left, but 12 milliseconds in the bottom right, because the panel refreshes quicker, you know, top to bottom than a CRT would, and the latency is how long it takes to get to the panel and start So a couple things, a couple things, so we can address this, because... We're asking this, we're, we're phrasing these things in, in the series of questions so that it, it's more easily understood. But why, the first thing, why would a CRT measure greater than 16.6 milliseconds? It's because it's not all that simple. A CRT has a lot of overscan lines that you don't even see on the display that have to be rendered. You mean le less than 16, 16 milliseconds? You mean less than, not, not more than? No, I mean more than. I'm saying that if... CRTs would never measure more than that unless it's one of the HD CRTs that have the same chips that the the modern L or the early edition. L oh, we're talking about. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm 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 getting the I'm getting the conversations yeah. a little confused here. I'm, I'm I'm mixing things up. What I meant to say was. Sorry, I do this. No, all this the time. is my fault. Things that make sense up here don't fall out of my face the uh, right this, way. This has nothing to do with the CRT. This has, what I'm about to say has nothing to do with what I just said about CRTs. That was just nonsense. What I meant to say is the reason that we measure flat panels in the top left and not in the top right is because primarily we're only interested in seeing how much slower this television is to get started than a CRT. We don't care what the bottom number is. We only care about how much slower, how much longer it takes a flat panel to start drawing or rendering a field as opposed to a CRT. Because that's the number that really means something in terms of latency. Not that bottom number, because that bottom number doesn't tell us anything different than that top number. It doesn't tell us anything different. than that. But it, it does. And that's maybe something I need to adjust and verify, um, because one of the things that the times oh, I got mine right here. I always have mine. I always have my time slot within the yeah. You know. All right. So the only problem I've had with the time sleuth um, consistently is something I could solve and should have solved a long time ago. I should get a little rubber grommet that's just about the same size as the okay. sensor here, yeah. because the one problem I have is if you have a TV. Yeah, you know, here's my mock knock. You're not scratching box. TVs with and it. I do anymore. this. No, none, none at all. It's actually very smooth and soft okay. inside. Laser Bear, Greg, not a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. But oh yeah. <laughs> damn, I like yes, his sir. products. Um, when I put it mm -hmm. like this, the sensor isn't quite where it's supposed to be. So I, I need to put a rubber grommet on here. I'm shocked I haven't done this yet, so that I could, like, stick it in to the exact I understand. corner. Because all the time, I'll have measurements that are half a millisecond off just because, you know, I'll, I'll wiggle it, I'll turn it, whatever else. So I, I need to do that to double check. And there's also overscan. There's still overscan on flat panels these days. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. 
a couple of pixels versus, you know, why I like 1080p 5X so much. So well, I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's very common for there to be less latency at the bottom than at the top, meaning that you might get a reading of 10 at the top and at the bottom you might get a reading of, you know, um, 20, 24 or something instead of 26 like you would expect. It's not always the same because the panels aren't drawn line by line, uh, you know, single, single pixel at a time. They're drawn full lines top to bottom, most cases, obviously other than what we've discussed. So it doesn't take necessarily 16.5 milliseconds to scan all the way down. So that's lag catches up yep. with itself. Which brings up the question, if you're playing a shmup, you want the fastest on the top, or Tetris or whatever else. But if you're playing a fighting game where most of the action's on the bottom, you would want a panel that catches up faster. Well, you would ideally uh, you would want it. Ideally, you would probably want a panel that renders the bottom first. Just like we were talking about when I gave that example of is the action on the top or the bottom, and that's where you want that's wherever the action is is ideally where you want the where you want the the panel to start rendering video. So, but but again, do you think that that your measurement discrepancies might be more like a, like you said? Would, wouldn't that be more a result of just human error where you put because you're putting it in approximate position and not precise 100 percent possible okay. yes i try to be very clear in my wording about when i know something versus when i'm pretty sure i know yeah, yeah, something yeah. and this is not something i know for a fact this is you know i'd have to take the bezel off of a couple of monitors i'd have to make sure the sensor is in the exact spot i'd have to try multiple lag testing devices because you know shout out to uh, to dan and christoph for designing this awesome thing but you know there's not it's not perfect in every scenario ever so <laughs> you know in in order to really prove that i'd have to dig very deep into this stuff it's just my kind of what I've seen. Just a side note, Bob, with, just a know. side note. Have you ever uh, have you ever tried to use the um, the input latency testing facilities that are that can be found on the OSSC now? I, I really I, I know that's been done for a while and I've never tried it, but that might be kind of interesting. I might I might try that just to see how that works. I don't even know how it works. I think they put a little they put a little photo diode on there, right? That you can a little photo diode okay. on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's the honest reason for that. Uh, I'll skip to the end and say laziness. But when I first met you guys, I had this idea of taking a Nomad and my 1,000 frame per second camera and going to Best Buy and testing TVs for mm -hmm. latency. Sounds like something not Steve would do. Yeah, 100%. And not only, not only was that cumbersome and weird... And people, I'm sure people at the store would have gotten sick and thrown, you know, sick of me and thrown me out. I got kicked but out of just, a Best Buy for doing something like that. Yeah, <laughs> but there's so much that's involved in that. And there's so many factors. Yeah. Where here's the factor with the time sleuth. You stick it up to the monitor. If you get a reading that follows what you would expect, it's probably right. There are some panels where the backlights aren't as bright as they should be at first. So you get a slightly two, three milliseconds, a slightly longer reading. So that happened with the Zsworks panel. I got like a three millisecond reading, and it was just because the crappy backlight in the Samsung panel with his electronics wasn't lighting up fast enough. So it's not perfect, but if I run this thing through 20 TVs, it's as simple as USB power on the side of the TV, HDMI, set it to game mode. Okay, am I getting a different reading on all three? Yes, so we're good. Or in like in the case of the plasma, that's why in the video I switched from 60 hertz to 30 hertz and back just to show people that I was actually getting yeah, yeah. a reading. It wasn't just freezing. Right. So that's it. The, the ease of use of a device like this. Then, you know, shout out to Leo Bodnar. Those tests are the ones that started all of this stuff, but it's one resolution per device. Having five on this thing makes me want to have 20 yeah, on it's, it. It's wonderful. A needy nerd. What a what fantastic utility. So yeah, it's the ease of use that made me want this. So I, that's why I never swung around to the OSSC. That's why I think I tried on this live stream with you. I tried the HD Retrovision. Wait, geez, I'm sorry. HD Fury. Yeah, because the HD Retrovision doesn't make new products. HD, HD Retrovision, they don't make new products. They do not. So. No. That's right. So, But we tried the HD Fury lag test. And I remember that. It was cumbersome and fine. Do but like, even if I kept that device... Just holding this up to a monitor. Yeah. Do, do they still so. make uh, time sleuths and sell them? Or I thought that was like a one time. Part shortage. Part shortage. Okay. Everything's down, man. Yeah. It's so sad. It's so sad. Good Lord.
Well, I thought when they originally sold them, it was only going to be like a one-time thing. I think they were so popular. Uh, Ryan took that over? They were just so popular that they just said, you know what, if people are going to buy them, let's make a few more. I think. I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't pay. I don't. And then Ryan took over making them. Other, you're, I think it's open source. I think you're allowed mm -hmm. to make them. Okay. And I think the reason people don't is, you know, the freaking part shortage. And, you know, it's I, people, uh, you know, sorry to, to go off on the rails here, but I think people take for granted how smooth yeah. this is. If somebody did a shitty 3D print and you dragged oh. this across your brand new OLED and scratched it, so many times I've accidentally dragged this across the panel nothing ever happened because it's nice and smooth and everything's fine so i think that's another factor that people might might start to think about is oh yeah i'll just make a run of 50 and make some quick cash then you start scratching um, people's panels yeah. yeah it's a very quick way to i know ruin plenty your business of i know forever. plenty of people so, on ebay who would who, who would jump to do that yeah yeah so There's sad. A, you know people who like to draw with crayons would definitely oh, do something yeah like that, exactly so. very good bob but well, before this derails into uh, you know into anything else, um, I loved everything we talked about. I just I think you all gave me a lot to think about in how I could find more tools to measure these things. The Gilt is amazing. Have either of you two ever used one of those? The Gimp? I'm sorry, I don't uh, do that. <laughs> no, we're not watching Pulp Fiction. Uh, it is a device that plugs into your PC okay. that you do a lag test on the monitor, and it tests everything. Your USB latency, the software on your PC, the panel, and that's what I'm going to be using to test 120 and 144 hertz because I could take my PC or, or maybe somebody's very fast laptop and be able to go up to these panels. And the only difference would be I'd have to have a base measurement. So like here is the total latency at its native, which is going to be higher than a time sleuth latency because you're taking everything into account, your PC, your software and mm -hmm. everything. But it, it gives you all of the info that we talked about at the beginning. You have to know, it, it, from the context of a PC, hopefully someday they'll port it to consoles where you could buy a cartridge and plug it in yeah. or some shit. But, um, but in the context of a PC, it gives you all of the information that we were talking about before. What's your controller latency going to be? You know, What's your processing going to be? What's the final signal coming out of your PC? And uh, it even works with MAME as well. Oh, wonderful. A really yeah, that's, pretty tool, cool. so. that's pretty cool. That's pretty That's pretty bitchin'. Yeah, Art has mine now. I got to get that back so I could do the follow-up video with it. But I think that's something both of you would actually be very yeah. interested in. That's pretty cool. I've never, I've never even heard of that. That's pretty neat. So I will, uh, I'll use that to test a lot of the follow-up. But I think I'm going to also have to defer to a lot of the the fighting game communities, a lot of the pro Tetris, and and really any other reaction time based game communities to maybe have some players volunteer to go through some of these. I think it's really important to do this you know? because I, I think that as years have went on, anecdotes have sort of ruled the world in terms of latency and what that means for competitive game players. I think that we need to get the anecdotes yeah. out of the way because we now have technology that will actually allow us to more effectively quantify Latency and what does that mean for people? I think we should start doing some blind cross studies here. I think we should, and I and, and if we want them yeah. to be fair and if we want them to be honest, you definitely don't need to be a part of them. That's all I'm saying. I know what you did with Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I agree completely, and I, I like to. Get, but but you're in the mecca like of it, Bob. You're you're in that you're in the prime zone. You are friends with all of those arcade competitive fighting champions all you need to do is go down there with some equipment and say guys guess what i want you to sit down and i want you to play three rounds on three different sets that's all you have to do and you take all that data you analyze it and then you give out the results to people on your website retrorgb.com dot org that's still up yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> In, in all honesty, everybody that I work with in these communities, not only would they be willing to, they would love oh, yeah, because, to do something but, like this because they want that data. It's for going themselves. that will dispel so much years worth of. I mean, so for a, 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 a lifetime's worth of of a well, lifetime uh, that will dispel so much uh, misinformation that uh, maybe we can finally start building like some data on. I think we should really start getting some data on that. I really do. Yeah, and I would also love to, and this might just be hypothetical, but I would love to find an incredibly fast OLED gaming monitor 
and I'd love to find an incredibly fast, you know, budget LCD monitor that's the same, the same, you know, time sleuth latency, but obviously the OLED's going to have the black levels that are better, you know, the, the full light to full dark that's better, and I want to see if any of these pro players have have their games affected by it other than well this one looks a lot better like other than the experience it will that actually affect it yeah so i think that's going to be kind of important um that's a very interesting question because it i mean it kind of reminds me of those other like psychological tests that they do where um you know kind of like the background of something Im- impacts how you perceive it right like I mean, there's those famous like mind benders, you know, where like a you have two parallel lines, but they look not parallel hey. because the background is on an angle, or you have yeah. two objects that are the same length, but you know because of what's behind them, one looks way bigger. Um, <laughs> that's a trick that you use all the time, I'm sure, Bob. Well, um, dude, but, but what you're saying, <laughs> what you're saying, Nick, though, is really important because even television manufacturers have made money off of this, and it's simply from Televisions that might not have an inherent high contrast ratio, they buy these light kits, these light, these LED light kits that affix to the back of your TV that will produce colored yeah. light so that your perception of contrast on the actual video content is much more than without the, with, with, than if those lights didn't exist. So Nick brings up an extremely good point about that. Yeah, absolutely. And anybody that's never experienced that, I mean, just think, The easiest example I can give is think of a song that everybody else likes that you hate. Friday, Rebecca Black. It was on the radio when you got, (laughs) it was on the radio when you got pulled over, you know, for speeding or something like that. So you don't even realize it, but you're subconsciously doing that. I mean, your subconscious perception of things absolutely has direct effect on everything that you do. So you're totally right, Nick. Great point bringing that shit up. And, you know, the perception of one versus the other and, you know, yeah, that that is awesome. Yeah. So I'd like to close on two things. A quick one that I think all three of us would agree with. First and foremost, this is a technical discussion that we nerds want to have because we feel like it. If you want to enjoy your games, buy any basic monitor that has been proven to have low latency buy a scaler that doesn't suck, something that's for gaming and not one of those scam cables, and you're fine. You don't have to worry about any of this stuff ever. If you ever get to be the top echelon of players, then maybe come back to this again. But everything that we discussed here is really more about the nerd theory than your real world application. A frame of lag total probably isn't going to be detected by anybody, including your wireless controller, you know, your display, whatever else. So I'm sure you two both Absolutely. Agree with that, and right? and just to add to that, retrorgb.com is not an enemy to retro pie. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with a raspberry pie. Oh yeah. All of us are I'm I i can not speak for Nick because Nick is kind of a he's a well Nick's a what what would you call it? Mustache snob. Yeah, he's snob. a mustache yep. snob forward slash libertarian. But I we believe that um raspberry pies, if that's how you want a game. It's a fantastic solution. It it really is an excellent solution if it if it checks yeah. all of your boxes, go for it. That's all I wanted to say. No, it's 100%. You know, there's this big misconception that you know, because we talk about original consoles, we shun everything else. And everybody in the emulation scene recognizes that that's Absolutely. bullshit and we all love this Absolutely. stuff too. It's just the other people that right. don't. So, uh, the other thing that I wanted just because I just have to ask if I was a, if I was a better person, I would not ask this, but can you, if you had to pick one, each of you, what is your favorite worst misconception about latency that you've ever heard? Can you, I'll go first. Then yeah, yeah you, you go stage. first. Cause there's a few that I'm, somebody introduced me to uh, a, you know, a semi pro player once. And like, oh, you know, you, you know, you're into retro stuff. But you, you love Bob's site. It shows you how to get the best out of your old consoles. And I'm like, yeah, you know, do you play on an RGB monitor? And they went, RGB? RGB adds lag. What kind of idiot would use RGB in a competition? We use composite. And I just, I, I, that was six years ago, and I still laugh to myself about that every time I hear it. Somebody actually thought that the analog video output of a console so you could plug your RGB cable into your Super Nintendo or your composite cable into your Super Nintendo. They legit thought RGB added more lag. 
That one will stay. I with think you I know forever. mine. And the reason I'm what I'm about to say, Bob will probably edit this out because he's a loser apologist, horse rapist. Yeah, but but probably. But, Here's what I'm going to say, and the only reason I mention this is because this truly caused not not just a rift, but a huge uh, misinformation campaign that followed the comments of this one person. And let me just be very clear: words do matter. Be very careful. Be very careful. Be very careful about what you say. <laughs> Shut up, Bob. Let me start this over. Be very careful about your words. Uh, let me start that over because I know you're going to cut all that. We'll start it right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just start again. Well, the one thing that I would say that I find absolutely appalling, when it when it when it comes to uh, when it comes to sort of um, myths and legends about lag, is that certain devices create zero lag. And I'm not going to mention his name because Bob doesn't want to do that. But there was a video that circulated oh. a few years ago about this. SCART RGB to HDMI video processor that had no inherent latency. I got literally probably 600 emails from people asking me why their RGB modded Super Nintendo all of a sudden has all of this lag because they use this a YouTuber influencer's recommendation and now they're up now they're up the creek without a paddle and they're going back to composite because the lag was so bad. I hate that guy simply because he doesn't care. Uh, you know, I'm not going to cut this out because you just brought up a point and you accidentally made me seem like an asshole, which is deserved. But what if that person, what if that person that you're talking about plugged an RGB cable into that device and could no longer play their fighting game and thought that's why RGB added lag? Exactly. So, exactly, it. Bob. All right, I'm going to leave this in. I never try to hide the fact that I'm a moron sometimes. You're right. I'll stop laughing at that. That could have not been that person's fault at all. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, we're, we're, we are only going by what other people tell us. And that's why it's so important to recognize that your words matter. If you have a platform, be very careful about the things that you say to people because they're going to take it at face value. And they might not, it might not work out. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, fair. I'll leave that in. Nick, how about you? I don't know that I have a favorite piece of misinformation or misconception, but... Um, I mean, the closest I can get is, um, I think your average person would probably assume that like a TV is pretty uniform. And I think it's kind of cool that, um, uh, certain brands had like either in addition to like having game modes had certain inputs that had lower lag than others, like specifically designed for gaming or even I I don't know if this is true, but I had heard um, that there were TVs where you would put it into like PC mode, the, PC like mode, the input yes. label, the PC. It wasn't like game mode, but you like labeled the input PC, and it kind of did the same thing as game mode. Um, Absolutely, my LG yeah. TV. If you if you if you rename the 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 input to PC, you'll get four 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 video output, and it does all kinds of awesome things that you wouldn't otherwise have unless you did that. So that's a really good point, Nick. Yeah, so just like as a general point, like TVs cannot use generally be described by a single number for latency. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I actually think like the, the having an input dedicated for gaming is kind of cool that maybe a lot of people don't know. I would love to see that. I would love to see an input because you know who else would use that input. So if there was theoretically. Every TV that came out from now on had an input that said gaming only. That would mean it would turn off all processing, would turn off all manipulation of the image, and just get the image on the screen as fast as possible. The group of people that would also love that are any video files that have invested in really high-end equipment, whether it's a processor for older signals or even stuff that takes 1080p and scales it to 4K, there's a bunch of equipment out there that does a really amazing job presenting a signal that very often is ruined by, uh, you know, you've spent the time taking your TV in every resolution and every input to, you know, turn off all the settings. Then you do a, a firmware update one day that you didn't even know happened, happened in the background. And all of a sudden you're halfway through a movie and you're like, what the fuck is going on? And you pause it and everybody at your house is like, what are you doing, you fucking nerd? Just watch the movie. Clearly this has happened multiple times. Then you're going through the menus and you're like, why did why did MPEG compression get turned back on oh, or something that. like so yeah, it's 
Oh, uh, yeah. I got the name wrong, but you know which one I'm talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah. So. Well, it's, yeah, MPEG noise reduction, yeah. I think is what it is. But I... Yes, thank but, you, thank, uh, you, thank my, you. My my biggest pet peeve with the TVs is actually the the uh, frame interpolation. Like anytime I go to an Airbnb or a, a hotel and like a <sighs> new TV, I'm like the first thing I do is like get that shit. Tom off Cruise so told you to turn it off. It. Tom Cruise made a video yeah. <laughs> informing you to turn it off. And I just want to say one thing. I, yeah. Props to props. I, to I just want I just want to say <laughs> I'm going to have to pee. I'm I'm peeing right now on myself. So just okay. I want to turn. All right. Do you, do you... <laughs> All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll all talk badly about Voltar while he's gone here. But um, but yeah, that that's a big thing too is removing all that. That drives me absolutely crazy. And you know, I gotta say though, I don't know it's off topic to the discussion. I was over somebody's house once that um, uh, they only have cable TV because they want their local channels to mm-hmm. look, like they love the silly puff pieces and stuff. And then they use like a Blu-ray player or something and, or a, like a fire TV stick or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was over there and they had the local cable on through the cable, you know, shitty cable box. And it looked way better with all of that crap turned on. Now, as soon as you switch to the Apple TV or fire TV stick, it goes back to looking like dog shit. But that really compressed low end, you know, local cable TV signal that that actually did look better with the um uh, with all of that extra processing. So I could understand why TV manufacturers do that because they figured that people are smart enough to know the difference will turn it off and everybody else who's plugging in their crappy signal would, would appreciate that it looks better. I just wish... Um, what's the new mode that's been out in the past year or so? It's not like creator's mode or... Dire- it's some kind of like... It's some mode that's not director's edition, but it might as well be where TVs will switch uh, automatically switch on to it if certain movies come on uh, there's like an edid setting for it it's, somebody in the comments is going to know exactly what i'm talking about but you know that that is at least appreciated i wonder if like some of those um video processing things were kind of a response to something that i used to see all, very often when i like back when i worked at best buy you know 18 years ago or something which is you had all these you know new HD TV is sitting in the shelves and they're all playing this like high def content off a streaming server and it looks really good in the store. They go buy this TV, take it home, plug in their, you know, Comcast or whatever cable provider they had and it'll just look like absolute shit and they'd return the TV. Like that happened so much back in the day. And I like, I, I speculate that, you know, some of those can't blame them. MPA compression things or noise reduction things were just responses to realizing that a lot of people were, you know, not necessarily plugging in uh, 1080p content to their their TVs. Which is totally fair. Yeah. I just wish that manufacturers would actually just... Because it's... The cost of setting a leave me the fuck alone mode is zero. Yeah. Yeah. Is zero cost to these manufacturers. One engineer spends five minutes having a button that, you know, bring up your menu, fuck off mode. Beautiful. That's it. That's like, it is zero actual cost to these. That's my biggest complaint. Leaving it all on as default, I might make that same decision if I was that product manager, but not having a way to very easily turn it all off. Like I did a demo a couple of years ago on some TCL TVs that when you turn it to game mode, it dropped to like, 14 milliseconds in the top left corner, which is great. And then you go into the settings and you have to use an, uh, a cell phone app. You couldn't actually access it with the menu. You go to the cell phone app and you turn off that extra compression or uh, the thing that you were talking about. There was two settings and then it dropped to eight. It's like, why Why was that not part of yeah, game mode? Yeah. So yeah, that's my biggest complaint. Not that the manufacturers do it, that there isn't a one button push to turn it all off. Yeah. And as you can see, all of these companies are totally listening to our complaints. <laughs> yeah, totally. Ugh. Well, this was awesome. I appreciate both of your time very much. Uh, if anybody wants some overpriced bullshit clone uh, adapters, you can go to Voltar.com and buy some RGB adapters for your cables. If you uh, if you never actually want to buy a cable, go to HDRetrovision.com. Yep, sign up for the mailing list, and maybe in a year or two you'll get a... A message 
telling you that says in a year or two from then yeah. more cables will be out that's right. right and uh if you want to be lied to about lag uh, or you just want to watch a fat guy in really nice hoodies go to retrorgb.com so uh thank you all very much for doing this and um you know hopefully we helped some people and and cleared up some misconceptions thank you bob Hey everybody, I am joined here by Nick Mueller from HD Retrovision and Zach. <laughs> Zach, what the fuck are you laughing at, Zach? Hey everybody, I am. <laughs> I'm not even gonna stop it. I'm just yeah, yeah, just do it in post. I didn't get to begin. Hey everybody, I am. <laughs> fuck you, Zach. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Hey everybody, I am. He... <laughs> okay, 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 hold on. I told you I wasn't done! <laughs> oh, I should have started with a beer. I'm gonna what? start over. What? Jesus Christ. What? <laughs> this is supposed to be a serious discussion about latency. You know, <laughs> okay, wait, 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 seriously. Let me chew these Daltoids up real quick. Let me chew these uh, Rolates. I've got really bad heartburn. <laughs>